All right, welcome in to WarChant.com, top 40. Here we go, 10 through 6, the best of the best, at least in terms of talent and or importance to this team. I want to start right off the bat with a guy who cracked the top 10 in the composite ranking, and Alec Eberle. Uh, and, and I think he's an interesting guy because – He's a guy that I think Florida State fans are torn on. He's either really criticized at times unfairly because he was playing hurt a lot, or he's thought to be a much better player than he's shown by some people that I have been in debates with. Alec Everly top 10, there's no doubting his importance. Well, yeah, I mean, he's a redshirt senior. He's your team captain. I think he's got 32 straight starts. I mean, so he's the, he's the anchor of that offensive line, so he's important. But as you said, he got kind of unjustly criticized a couple of years ago because of the injury. Then last year, he was a little bit better, I think, at the center position, a little bit more consistent. So hopefully, redshirt senior, he can be solid in there and really give him a nice bump up with his play this year. So I think he's right where he is at number 10. I like that. We seem to have really all pretty much yeah. more than any other player on this list agreed about Alec Eberle. I think he was nine in one list, 10 in the other, nine in another, 10 in the other. So there it is. One, one thing if I could say really quick on him, I do think the change in system is going to help a lot of these offensive linemen, but in particular Alec Eberle, I think they asked a lot of that center position. There's no doubt. In Jimbo, Jimbo Fisher's offense, I think it's going to be a lot simpler. Uh, I think he's going to have a chance to use the, the his ment mental uh, strength, but also his physical strength. I think he'll play better than he's played. Yeah, unless your name's Brian Stork, you're not. Yeah, probably can't do everything you're asked of there. It was, uh, yeah, it was uh, Herculean, uh, the task that they assigned to center's uh, previous offense. Now, if you got one who can do it, then you can win a national championship. If not, you're in trouble. Uh, Nyquan Murray is a guy that everybody is, uh, I mean, he's got to have this spectacular season, right? This offense seems so perfect for him, and he's a guy that you've seen flashes, but the consistency has been lacking. It's He's a frustrating player. Because you think about, you say that, you look at some point, you look at that great catch he had in Michigan to oh, win the sure. game and going up over the guy and doing it, you're like, this guy's going to be the next star, and then he's so inconsistent last year and seems to be a little bit of a hot head at times, but he's the one receiver. I had him number five overall, so a little higher than the composite, and that's mostly because He's the only receiver coming back to, with any real experience. Everyone else, you're just going to, we think Tamar on Terry is going to be good. We think DJ Matthews is going to be good, but they haven't done anything yet. So that's the only guy with some consistency. So you're right. He needs to at least be solid and consistent and be a, a reliable receiver this year. And knock on wood with his health as well. There are those question marks. But, you know, Nyquan Murray, uh, a guy that we've all seen the flashes, like we said. Yeah, and I had him a little bit lower just because the thing that concerns me is coming off an injury because he has not been super dependable on the field. How, how dependable is he going to be in rehab? Is he going to be a guy that attacks rehab? This is his last year, so he's got to take advantage of this opportunity. Um, but I'm a little bit concerned of that. And then also, again, last year was supposed to be the year he was going to be the guy. Jimbo told everybody he needs to be the guy, and it didn't really happen. So I'm kind of a little bit of wait and see. I mean, I still have him in the top 15, but I didn't have him quite as high. Uh, Marvin Wilson is a guy, again, coming off of injury. We talk about uh, a chance to be a star. We saw him step on that field. I still remember on uh, media day and, and seeing him and realizing why they were so excited about getting him. Uh, how's he doing in terms of coming back off that injury? Sounds pretty good from everything we hear that he should be ready to roll. And you got to remember, this is a guy that Willie Taggart absolutely raved about going into spring practice before he got hurt. He had lost some weight that he needed to do. He was blowing up in those, whatever he calls them, not fourth quarter, whatever they call the them. The chase. Yeah, i got to keep track of all those. So he was doing really well in those. He seems to have the right attitude. So yeah, assuming he comes back healthy and everything we hear, he will be healthy. Put him next to DeMarcus Christmas. He has that experienced guy to rely on there. He's poised to have a breakout season. I think he's another guy you need him to live because he was the number one defensive tackle two years ago in high school. So, I mean, if he can live up to that, you get another guy like, I hate to say, like a Timmy Jernigan or someone there who can just dominate people up there. That helps the entire defense. Landon Dickerson is on this list, and I, I love him as a player. When he's healthy, there's not just the talent uh, that's on display, but he's a nasty player. He's kind of a guy that can bring the identity to this offensive line and a guy that can really – uh, serve to intimidate. I mean, he's a kind of a, a nasty player, and that's that's a compliment to him. He just hasn't been healthy. Yeah, and when he is healthy, he's been very good, and I think he's one of those guys, again, that'll take another step in this offense with Greg Fry and Willie Taggart. When Dickerson got hurt uh, last year and then in the spring, he was a little bit limited. Willie Taggart just said he was he really stepped up his game as a leader, was much more vocal, and you add that to what he does on the field, I think it's a great combination. All the metrics, everything you look at in a player, and Levante Taylor says, superstar, this is the year. 
Yeah, I'm, I think he's the most kind of, I don't know how he's not higher in the list, honestly. I mean, I had him number two. You'll say that, but I mean, let me ask let me ask you, because I already had him pretty low there. Uh, you hate him, obviously. So let me ask you this. Uh, name a defensive starter who had a good season last year that's back. Uh, yeah, that defense, not many guys. Taylor. But the thing about Levante Taylor is he's one of those guys that you have to give the credit because people don't throw at him a lot because he didn't get a ton of opportunities to make plays. But that's always dicey. I mean, that's what people would say about Marquez White, and I never bought in that Marquez White was as great as everybody said. So I, I don't know. I think a lot of people are going at Tavares McFadden. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see. I, I like Levante Taylor a lot. I'm not putting him down. I'm just saying, you know, and I probably should have had him a little bit higher looking in hindsight. But you're a motivator. But I'm trying and to motivate I like that him. About to you. You're a motivator, go, man. man. This is what we're doing here. Just a little bit of motivation, and that's fine. And if he does get into the return game, I think that's another weapon that would, again, should elevate him higher. Yeah, he's certainly talented. Next time we do the top 40, all of us will squeeze in here into this camera, and we will find a way to go through this top five. I think it's a top five that would be pretty easy to talk about. That's next. The Warchant.com top 40.